What's up everyone, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and I've got another roundup for you today. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the content coming out from Guy in a Cube. Also, just a big thanks to everyone that's currently subscribed. We hit 10,000 subscribers yesterday. Very humbled, very thankful. Thank you so much for watching. Last week I mentioned the fact that I live in the Houston area and we had flooding and just from the Harvey storm that came by, everyone's safe here, but I just wanna throw out some thoughts and prayers for those in the path of Hurricane Irma. This is a much more serious storm than what Harvey was and just looking out for those that are in the Caribbean affected by the storm and those in Florida that are about to get hit, just stay safe and get out of there. With that, let's jump into the roundup. Prathi Kamasani's got a blog post for us that talks about how to use the Power BI APIs to help document what you've got inside of Power BI. So she's using M syntax to actually call the APIs to populate data inside of Power BI desktop and generate a report that lists basically what you've got. One thing to be aware of though, is that this is in the context of the user that you're doing this with. So it's not gonna be everything inside of Power BI, it's whatever that account has access to. So be aware of that. One thing I love here is that the M syntax, she gives you all the examples of the M syntax that's being used, including authenticating to Azure Active Directory. So this is if this is something that you're interested in, be sure to check out this blog post, it's pretty cool. Chris Webb from Across the Pond's got a blog post for us that talks about a custom data connector that he has created and published out on GitHub that works against the Cognitive Services text APIs. This can be used for language detection, key phrase extraction, and sentiment analysis. It does require that you sign up for the Cognitive Services inside of Azure, but this is available for you that you can go download, play with, and it anything, just see how to create a custom data extension for Power BI, for M. The link for this blog post is down in the description below, along with every link for the items in this roundup, along with bonus links for you, so go check that out. Casper de Jong's got a blog post where he looks at how to filter data using a comma-separated list. The magic all happens inside of DAX using calculate and path contains, and this is just a really kind of interesting way to go about how to filter data. As always, Casper does a great job of walking through how to actually do this. And the thing he points out is that you do need access to the model to do this. However, if you connect to an external data source such as analysis services, or you're connecting to another model that's inside of Power BI, inside of Power BI Desktop, you can create a new measure inside of Power BI Desktop that then can be filtered against whatever is in that external data source. So you still need to use Power BI Desktop to do this, but it's a pretty cool way that you can use a comma separated list inside of a measure to just filter some data. So if this is something you're interested in and you wanna learn a little bit more about DAX and maybe some cool approaches of how to do things, be sure to check out this blog post. If you're using Azure Analysis Services and you wanna to connect to Azure Data Lake Storage, this blog post is for you. With the latest update of SQL Server Data Tools from Tabular, we've actually added in the ability to connect to Azure Data Lake Storage from the new Get Data Experience. So you can take advantage of connectivity to Azure Data Lake Storage if you're using that, as well as using some USQL to actually get the information that you need. So again, if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to check out this blog post, links down below. Last week I shared a blog post where we announced the availability of the new timeline visual in the Office Store. This week we had a blog post from one of the researchers that helped create this to really give a story behind how this visual came about, what the purpose of it is, and best of all, there is a video link down below in this blog post that walks through how you can actually create one of these timelines. It's actually a really good video and walkthrough of how to do this. And the blog post is interesting just to know some of the backstory and history behind this. So if you're interested in that, if you're curious of how you can implement the timeline visual for your reports, check out this blog post. All right, everyone, let me know down below what was your favorite for me. While the timeline item is very cool and I wanna use that more, 
I gotta go with the Power BI APIs inside of Power BI reports that Prathy did because I spend a lot of time on that, so that hit home for me. But let me know down below what you think and let me know if there was something that I didn't cover that you thought was interesting and you'd like to share that out with everyone. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If you're new here, like I said before, be sure to subscribe for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.